Hey guys, it's Jaeger262 and welcome back to more Armored Warfare. Today is just going to be a news episode, and I don't really make a lot of these. If it's something that you, you guys would like to see more of, let me know and I might do more. But it's pretty simple, you can look up the news, they're really good about posting updates and things, and you can read it on your own. I'm not going to just read this whole article to you, but the reason I thought I'd cover this story is because right on the heels of my last video talking about wanting more vehicles in the game and wanting more variety they posted this this morning and so I just thought what a really great way to start the week and just it's good news and bad news all at once obviously the good news is we're getting more vehicles and as you can see right up here this covers the BVP M80A which is a Yugoslavian vehicle uh, here it is here the exact one that they're copying only they're doing some new features along with this, and that's the good news, bad news part. This, it's going to be really interesting. Let me just walk you through the rest of the article. So I'm not going to read all this. It's just explaining what Yugoslavia was. For those of you who don't know, it was the entire cultural region in the South Balkans that now is Serbia, Croatia, Bosnia, and Montenegro. And during the Second World War, it talks about Tito making Yugoslavia a modern military power how they oppose the Soviet Union post-World War II, why some of their first vehicles, which is what this talks about, were M4 Shermans and M47 Pattons. Eventually, they do build their own licensed vehicles, like the T-34. This isn't a T-34. This is, like it says here, a Yugoslavian copy. They did that a lot with Soviet vehicles. And so this whole article just covers Yugoslavia as a military power in the 60s and 70s when this was developed. And so... You get an APC, which is based off of, I believe, the Chaffee chassis or the M36 Jackson chassis. Two very different chassis. I'm just not looking at it very in detail. And so, again, if you want to read this article, Armored Warfare is really great with putting together just little quips about the countries are covering their vehicles. All very good. The only thing I care about is the BVP series and so that might look familiar to some of you guys because we already have the BVP M2 in game which was a Czech BMP copy so this is essentially the same thing at tier 4 and so it gives you some of its developmental history for example it borrowed a lot of its design features from the AMX 10P APC not the BMP the first one used a 20 millimeter autocannon not the Russian 30 millimeters and had the 7.62 coaxial with a crew of three just like the BMP-1 and one anti-tank missile complement. I don't know, wait. I've had two. Talking about where it is. I don't know, here it is. 20 millimeter Hispano Soyuz HS-04 autocannon, and yeah, two guided missiles. Later variants would have a 30 millimeter, and the anti-aircraft version is here, and this is the part that's really cool about this new story, and also a little bit odd. Also, before I say anything else, just like I was saying yesterday, this is an exclusive vehicle. So again, even though they're releasing new vehicles, this is technically exclusive. Now, it's not bound to a loot crate, it works like the Arabian Nights battle path. So, essentially what they're doing is they're going to introduce a new battle path. And that's what the whole first part of this article is about. So, go back and read that. They're going to do, it's not going to be Arabian Nights, I don't think. But because they've had so much success with the campaigns, they consider doing the battle path. And now they consider that that was a success. And so they're going to keep updating those. So now every time we get a new campaign, we'll get a new battle path with that campaign. And if you like that sort of thing, that's really cool. I personally hated it. Um, I mean, it really seemed like it was just another way. Obviously, we want them to make money, but nothing was guaranteed. The mission seemed kind of ridiculous for some. And the reason I bring that up is because this will be the first reward vehicle, the first exclusive vehicle in that battle path. And that was the M that was the T fifty five Enigma last time. And for some reason, I don't know if anybody else had this issue, but I got the Scorpion and the AMA the M one Abrams Storm 
first. I mean, those missions were ridiculously easy to complete, and the T-55 Enigma seemed almost impossible and got halfway through it before the event ended. And so, why the low tier one was so hard, I don't know, but it makes me feel like getting vehicles like this will be even harder in the future. So while it's great that Armored Warfare is doing it, what's not so great is that they're making it tied to battle paths instead of just giving us more progression vehicles, which would be nice. Uh, but if you're a fan of the battle paths, you know, system, you enjoyed it, you got all three exclusives, or even the fourth, which was the tier 10 Alte, then this is good news, because now you'll be able to get more vehicles. Back to this, the reason they're showing you this anti-aircraft variant, and they do this in all their articles, and the anti-tank variant here, which has six guided missiles, and this is two 30mm cannons, I believe, um, is because they're implementing a really new way to look at premium vehicles, which I don't know how it's going to work, but let me just get down to the models here. So, the first vehicle is just going to be the normal one, only they're going to put in a 30 millimeter cannon, and you're only going to be able to use one of these missiles, which is alright, because at least you know you're not going to have to deal with, although I prefer the 20 millimeter with Peli, but I don't think the Yugoslavian vehicle had any Peli rounds, or any special type of hash, they would have just had high explosive in. AP and so 20 millimeters would be kind of impossible. So Armored Warfare is kind of changing the vehicle to have a 30 millimeter cannon here as per a 2004 upgrade. So you're not actually going to be playing the 60s variant anyway. And so you won't, it shows two missiles on the model. In the article, they say that they're only going to be, you're only going to be able to fire one missile. So don't really know too much about that. That's a great AFV right there alone. But here's where it gets really cool. They say that just like with the French update, which all the French vehicles, you can decide how you want to play and you can customize vehicles based on your play styles. That's the idea here. They're not only releasing this as a base vehicle, but they're releasing the anti-aircraft variant and the anti-tank variant as three special options. Now, while these are all really cool, what I'm worried about is up here, uh, yeah, the, its biggest advantage will be, however, the option to configure it depending on what play style you prefer. So, what I'm worried about is that instead of getting just the base vehicle and then moving forward and having all the upgrades already unlocked, like the Ascod Light, if anybody's played the Ascod Light, it's a tier 8. Austrian premium vehicle on the Oscar Faraday line, you have the option to do a manned turret and an unmanned turret. And as soon as you unlock the premium vehicle, both options are already unlocked for you because it's premium. And so I wonder, will this be similar and you'll be able to choose between these three turrets? Or will you get the premium vehicle and have to, you know, grind some experience to get these turrets? Or the third option is what I'm really worried about. Will you, at the time of the battle path, get the vehicle and then have to choose right then and there? which one of the three you want to play, and that's the only one you get. And I don't really know how they're going to work it, but I'm hoping that it's the first option, that you'll have all three turrets, and as soon as you unlock this vehicle, you'll get to use all three of them, which would be really cool. And so that's why I wanted to cover this, because not only are we getting newer vehicles and variety, especially from a country like Yugoslavia, which I don't feel is covered in any armored vehicle games at all right now, but there's this potential to start allowing, like I was talking about in my last video where I said modern vehicles use modular construction or it's a basic hull and then you put on a bunch of new weapon systems. Will this be an introduction to putting multiple turrets on vehicles that already exist in the game? You know, like we do with the VBL, we have the tow and the autocannon turret or the Ascod light. Will we be able to do that with more vehicles and so that's why i wanted to cover this new story i already talked a little bit too much about it but go and check it on their website this is really the only models they have right now are just these three images but i think this is a really cool new feature and i think it has a lot of potential going forward for some interesting vehicles so hopefully everything's good the only downside is that again it's a battle path locked vehicle but we'll see how that works so 
throw up a like if you enjoyed it subscribe to the channel if you want more more armored warfare news videos or if you just want to see more armored warfare gameplay i'll be playing more later today um and as always thank you so much for watching and see you next time